I asked you guys to give me some questions about the Comma 3, and the biggest one by far was what's the difference between it and the C2? Is it worth upgrading? Well I went out and took my C2 and compared it directly to my C3 to see what the differences were and hopefully I can explain those in this video. So let's first start by just going over the hardware differences for anyone who doesn't know. So the biggest standout difference is the fact that the Comma 2 is a smartphone. It's a Leco Lee Pro 3. It's several years old now. It uses the cameras from this phone, all the internal sensors, the screen, and the biggest thing is the battery has just been removed from it. Meanwhile, the Comma 3 is built on a main board that Comma has designed and developed themselves. So for processors, Comma went with the Snapdragon 845 module for the Comma 3, while the Comma 2 still has the 821 from the Lee Pro 3. And essentially the 845 is about double the performance you can see here from some of the specs. And overall just a better platform. Storage, you get the 64 gigs from the Lee Pro 3 versus Samsung 256 or one terabyte SSDs in the Comma 3. So next up, we have the camera systems. You have the cell phone cameras on the Comma 2 and the OnSemi ARO 231s on the Comma 3, which there's really no comparison of these. The Comma 3 has automotive grade, purpose-built sensors, made for the specific application of level two driving. And the Kama 2 is using a cell phone cam. So here's some driving footage from the forward cam on the Kama 2. And I'm gonna overlay the Kama 3's forward narrow cam on top of that. And you can really see the difference in quality and difference in field of view from these two different focal lengths. Right now, they're actually both driving on these cameras alone so the driving model is using both of these so the comma 2 has a little wider field of view in within the driving model than the comma 3 and we'll touch back on that a little bit later when we talk about software specifically but as far as resolution and clarity you can see there's really no comparison and here's the wide camera which currently in september 2021 is just used to gather data it's not being used for driving in any way but you can see when you overlay the comma 2's field of view on it it has a much wider field of view and then the narrow cam takes up kind of the primary center uh, area of the camera so it's going to be able to be combined together and give you a really good view of the road ahead for hopefully future upgrades and models and development on the comma 3 but right now this is not being used at all so we're really just going to look at the differences between the narrow cams and here's a quality difference in just resolution from about the same perspective same distance just cropped in so you can really see the clarity and what you can resolve from these cameras comma 2 really no comparison and you can see here, it's really the same story with the driver monitoring cam. I've overlaid the comma 2's uh, camera over the comma 3, and there's no comparison. The dynamic range, the field of view, everything's just better on the comma 3. And this can be used for true driver monitoring in pretty much any situation. So for displays, we have a 1080p LED display on the comma 2 and a 1080p OLED display on the comma 3. Um, you can be the judge of which display you prefer. I like the Comma 3's display. I think it is a significant upgrade from the Comma 2. Once you've used them back to back, you can really see the difference. So one big change is the operating system from Android on the Comma 2 to a Linux-based operating system on the Comma 3. Currently, they essentially operate the same. There's probably a little bit more flexibility with the Linux, but that probably deserves a video all by itself. And lastly, we have the difference in the case design. You have the 3D printed case on the Comma 2 and the injection bolted case on the Comma 3. Obviously, this is a big increase in quality 
and kind of uh, probably simplifies production for comma and I do think the case looks really good they did a really good job overall designing this device but one of the big things people still want to know is what is the performance difference you know yeah I see it's different I see these hardware specs but how does this really compare today uh, right now being September 2021 with the comma 2 so let's get in the software basically boot up times here I've sped it up but it's essentially the same about 45 seconds um, the comma 3 boots up just a slightly faster and I mean that's probably not a big deal for most people but once again with the comma 3 being so new its boot times can be improved over time most likely where the comma 2 is kind of at its limit and as far as software these devices are currently running essentially the same version of OpenPilot there's very little differences between the two versions which means you're going to see a lot of the same things initially uh, for example like temperature the comma 3 still has the same temperature alarm kind of settings as the comma 2 even though it's designed totally differently and you know possibly can handle a much higher temperature but right now that hasn't been changed so it's something to just realize and consider that it's not the same because the devices handle the same temperature it's the same because the software just hasn't been changed yet and another thing that can possibly be improved by software is the sound of the comma 3. So I'm just going to pause here for a second and let you just listen to them side by side and you can judge which one has better sound quality. Uh, comma says the comma 3's sound can be improved over time so we'll see but again just something to consider. So now let's look at the actual driving model. Uh, essentially they're using the same model. It's the model from the comma 2. All the data has been trained essentially on comma 2 data. So it's going to be primarily using the comma 2 field of view and that's got to be kind of reapplied to the comma 3 to get it to work properly. And you notice with just the narrower field of view of the comma 3 it actually got me thinking like can it see the same amount of the road because they both have a cropped model view so I went and did some tests of some of the sharpest turns my car could handle and here's some of the side-by-side -side results and you can kind of judge this for yourself and see what you think so comma 2 on the left comma 3 on the right and you'll notice that the comma 2 hits the torque limit and kind of stays closer to the center line of the road in every instance I felt like I just had to grab the wheel and help the comma 3 a little bit and you can see here I tried this a couple of times where the comma 2 is hitting the torque limit and managing to barely make it onto the road and here you can kind of see the positioning the comma 2 is just about to hit its torque limit here comma 3 just slightly closer to the edge of the road and I felt like I had to take control but really these types of scenarios aren't the main use of OpenPilot OpenPilot really shines on long stretches of highway and interstate and these are places where I think the comma 3 performs just fine definitely on par with the comma 2 I've never really seen any issues and even better in some scenarios with the superior dynamic range so don't think that it is inferior in any way even on the same driving model really from here on I think we're just going to see improvements with the comma 3 and its software capabilities but comma doesn't ever promise any timelines so don't buy a device simply on the promise of future software comma is doing everything they can to improve the quality of the comma 3 but it being such a new device there's going to be a lot of quirks and issues that kind of occur that they're going to have to work out over this first year of development and with basic navigation being the only real software difference I understand why a lot of people aren't seeing the value in the upgrade if you're a person who already has a comma 2 and you're on the fence 
uh, maybe look for some new feature or development or progression with the comma three that makes it stand apart and really makes it worth the money in your opinion. If you're new to the comma ecosystem, I would probably recommend going with the comma three because this is definitely the future of what comma is working on. And if you want a device that you can hopefully keep long term, that I think Kama has a long term goal for, uh, this is the device I would recommend to you. Alright, that's it for now. And as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any more questions or anything you think I missed, please leave it in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.